Hi Elena, welcome on board to this Q&A session for the topic Airplane Configuration entitled to the subject Flight Mechanics. In this session, we will be seeing about the question analysis, the book reference and solutions for this particular topic. Now let me switch on over to the blog containing the study material. So here I am on the Age of Aerospace blog and the Gate Aerospace tab. Now scrolling down to the uh, flight mechanics portion. So here I have the flight mechanics uh, portion. Now dropping into the question analysis. So this is a question analysis. And here we can see that uh, this particular topic, the airplane, which is also known as the fixed wing aircraft configuration, there, there are uh, about two questions. One question, one one mark was asked in 2015, and uh, another two mark question was asked in 2007. Now, uh, going to the book reference portion of this uh, syllabus or the topic, you can refer the airplane design book by Jane Rothkamp. Uh, this particular volume, so here this particular volume and the chapter 3 of it, it discusses about these configurations in detail. Now let's get solving. So here, here is our first question. This is a one mark question from uh, Gate 2015. Now reading out the question, you can see consider a monoplane wing and a biplane wing with identical airfoil sections wing spans and incidence angle in identical conditions in a wing tunnel as compared to the monoplane the biplane experiences so basically they are comparing a monoplane wing and a biplane wing and uh, they are saying all other conditions are identical or same so compared to a monoplane wing the biplane wing uh, or the biplane configuration must experience they are basically con uh, concerned about the lift and drag now we need to answer in the terms of lift and drag uh, the basic difference between a monoplane wing and biplane uh, aircraft is nothing but in monoplane there are uh, there is only one wing and in biplane there are two wings so that is the basic uh, difference you can remember from the name mono means one and bi means two so these were these kind of aircrafts or airplanes were used uh, during the world war time and uh, here talking about the lift and drag so a single wing uh, generate some kind of lift and uh, drag similarly if we double the number of uh, uh, wings uh, it must proportionally increase that is uh, if uh, one wing generates some kind of lift and drag two wings will uh, basically generate twice the amount of lift and drag so that must be the answer this means that the biplane wing uh, configuration must experience a higher lift and a higher drag so dropping into the options here the option A discusses that uh, there is about uh, higher lift and higher drag so this op option must be the correct answer let's also check with the other options so here we can see that uh, in option B it is mentioning a higher lift and lower drag uh, this is impossible so we are checking out it now uh, in option C they are saying that a lower lift and lower drag this also not possible as the lift and drag gets doubled similarly uh, checking about the option D it mentions a lower lift and higher drag it is also not possible as the conditions are same so in that case we are left out with the option E and it must be the uh, right answer let's check so yes uh, as for the answer key option E that is the biplane experiences a higher lift and higher drag compared to a monoplane is the right answer. So here is a two mark question from uh, GATE 2007. So reading out the question they are saying that an air airfoil section is known to generate lift when placed in the uniform stream of speed u infinity at an incidence alpha and uh, a biplane consisting of two such sections of identical chord C separated by distance h is shown in the following figure with regards to the biplane which of the following statements are true so they are basically uh, mentioning a statement that if an airfoil is uh, kept in an uh, uniform stream of velocity of air or uh, some medium uh, at some angle of incidence it generates lift so what is the case with uh, biplane so they have provided us with the biplane configuration with same core same airfoil that is two wing sections separated by a distance h so this 
uh, based on this biplane in uniform uh, speed or velocity uh, what must be the true statement so here they, they are discussing about the upwash approach velocity downwash and uh, incidence so these uh, three or four parameters are basically analyzed over here so getting to this kind of configuration and uh, the uniform velocity so here we are seeing an uniform velocity stream and at zero angle of attack stream is uh, somewhat accelerating that is the velocity is increasing and uh, similarly as we increase the uh, angle of attack uh, it is uh, the stream is further increasing which is evident from the boundary layer so here you can see the thing is bulging so it means the velocity is increasing uh, as far as uh, incidence angle is concerned uh, it is not uh, too much high as 10 degrees or 15 degrees uh, incidence angle can also be called as a mounting angle that is the angle at which the wing is mounted or, uh, along with reference of the fuselage reference length so based on this uh, the angle must be lesser than 5 degrees so here we can see the velocity is increasing and the F1 is uh, basically experiencing an upwash, that is, and the stream is washed upwards. And next, the F1 is uh, experiencing a downwash. So there is an upwash and downwash, and the velocity uh, U is increasing. So these are the basic uh, understandings from this. And uh, any option saying that the velocity is decreasing must be wrong answer. So here, option A says that uh, both the F1 experience an upwash. Yes, they do and then increased approach velocity so it may be the right answer let's see uh, now option B uh, mentions that both airfoil experiences a downwash okay and a decreased approach velocity so the velocity keeps on increasing and it isn't decreasing in any of the portion on uh, neither on the top neither on the bottom so here decreased velocity approach velocity is the wrong statement so this isn't true Let's strike out the option B. And in this case, uh, in C, both airfoil experience and upwash, that is correct. And airfoil A experiences decreased approach velocity, while B experience and uh, increased approach velocity. This is the wrong statement because both of them experience the same kind of approach velocity. So let's strike out these two. And uh, there is a controversy that uh, uh, some answers say option A is correct and some say I mentioned that C is correct uh, considering the minute differences uh, due to the effect of uh, lower wing on the upper wing so uh, let's uh, stick to the uh, official answer key and here in option D they mentioned that the incidence for individual sections of the biplane is not altered so basically uh, when a biplane design is concerned there is a term called decalage so decalage on a fixed wing aircraft is the angle difference between the upper and lower wing of the biplane so in a biplane configuration two wings are basically uh, mounted at different angle of incidence that is uh, the upper wing may be mounted at three degree angle of incidence and the lower wing may be mounted at two degree angle of incidence there are multiple reasons such as uh, to avoid stall and etc uh, here this kind of uh, option is called as positive decalage angle so here uh, so these angles are altering so this also may be the wrong answer so here we are left out with option a that is the both airfoil experiences of wash and increased approach velocity let's check the uh, answer key so here as far as the answer key is concerned so both airfoil experiences and of wash and increased approach velocity so that's how we answer the question. There may be alternate approach and alternate solution for this uh, kind of uh, problem, uh, such as by applying uh, aerodynamics, the circulation and everything. Uh, we are not concerned about that over here. Uh, still, if there are some alternate answers or you do not agree with this answer, you can always drop in your answer in the comments. So it will be helpful to others. That's it for this session. Thank you. Let's crack great gate aerospace engineering.